join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining me again today in Bible Tract Echoes. I have my Bible open uh, to Psalm 88. We began looking at this psalm. I entitled it, The Saddest Psalm of All. We began looking at it yesterday. We're going to return to that today. If you have the chance right now to open your Bible, please do that. And uh, while you're getting your Bible open, if you have a piece of paper and a pen ready, two things. Number one, you may want to take some notes on what we say out of the psalm. But also, you may want to jot down our address or telephone number or website address, and we would love for you to contact us. We would like to put into your hands a sample packet of all of our English tracts. We here at Bible Tracts print gospel tracts. Been doing it since 1938. We do it for free. We give them away. We even pay the shipping. We do them in different languages and send them out all over the world by the millions. And we would want to help you be a more effective gospel witness by putting into your hands effective gospel tools, and that being tracks. One of the tracks that will be in that sample packet is called Memorial Stones. Memorial Stones. It's based upon the fact that, you know, sometimes children can ask some pretty blunt questions. This one based upon going by a a graveyard, and there are memorial stones there, and a child beginning asking questions, and you and I beginning to give godly, eternal answers. We're supposed to do this according to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. We're supposed to talk about spiritual things to our children as we walk by the way, and so on. This is a great track uh, to uh, for you to use in your evangelism. This one plus a, a, a number of others will be part of that English uh, sample packet of all of our English tracks. Now, at the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken, our announcer, is going to give the mailing address. He will not give to you the telephone number or the website address. I'm going to do that right now. And if you're ready, here we go. You can contact us using the telephone by calling area code 309-828-6888. One more time, the telephone number, we're located in central Illinois. The area code here is 309-828-6888. Or, as I said, you can go to the website and contact us using that. The website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. Inc. is I-N-C, short for Incorporated, the name of our ministry here. Again, www.bibletracksinc.org. Dot org. All right. Yesterday we began looking at Psalm 88. We said it was the saddest psalm of all. And on a cursory reading, you read through here, you say, wow, there's no hope given. There's no, there's no light of hope in this psalm. Well, I understand that. I think there is. But as we come here, we said yesterday that there are times that even godly people, due to life situations, feel crushed under the weight and the burden of a life circumstance, and they see no way out, and they're in despair. The idea of despair is hopelessness. Now, frankly, God's people ought never feel like they're they're hopeless because God Almighty is their Savior. But life can sometimes, as I said yesterday, just kind of knock our legs emotionally out from underneath us, and we feel like there is no one to help us. That's where a local church family is a help. That's where godly friends are a help. That's where spending time with the Word of God. And we began working through this psalm yesterday, and I said we're going to use some words that begin with the letter A. Yesterday, we talked about the, the action of the psalmist. He is praying in verses 1 and 2. Yesterday, we also talked about his address. He addresses God by the title, Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and that's the word for Jehovah, the covenant-making God. But now the third word that begins with the letter A that we you find here, uh, again, out of verse 1, we're going to talk about the psalmist's acknowledgement, what he acknowledges. Look at verse 1, Psalm 88. O Lord God of my, the next word is so significant, of my salvation. He acknowledges his salvation. He felt he was not beyond help. 
The writer owns the fact that he has a relationship with Almighty God. Did you realize that Old Testament people, uh, Saint, Old Testament saints, had a relationship with Almighty God just like New Testament saints? Oh, they did not have the indwelling Holy Spirit in every one of them like we have today. That's a distinctive of being part of the church dispensation. But my friend, the Old Testament saints had the same God who were saved by faith the same way anybody has ever been saved. Notice not only does it talk about the Lord of his salvation in verse 1, I again go to verse 9. Mine eyes mourneth by reason of my affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hand unto thee. He talks about and he implies in the statements here that he's owning his situation and even at times hints that he's owning perhaps that there's sin behind it. I go down to verse 13, which says this, But unto thee o, uh, have I cried, O Lord, again that Jehovah, in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee or go before thee. He said, I'm not going to let God get away from my life. Very first thing in the morning, he's crying out to God. He acknowledges his salvation. In the process, we're going to talk about the, the things going on in his life. This man knows he is saved, but he's also done some serious inspection of his life about perhaps is he in this situation due to sin. Now, let me stop and say this. It is possible for people to be in great, horrific situations not due to sin. Job Job, in the book of Job, Job was a godly, godly man, and yet in great despair. And his wife said, just cave in and give in to this. And Job says, how can I do that? My, he, he's a great man of God, and he's in great uh, difficulty, uh, almost, humanly speaking, hopelessness. But he wasn't, you know why? Because he sought out God. There was nothing between him and the Savior. But that being said, sometimes we are in despair and evil things happen because they're God's way of confronting our lifestyle, the sin we've done, and we've not listened privately, and we've not listened to previous situations. So God does some pretty awkward things at times to get our attention. God, whom God loves, he disciplines, according to Hebrews chapter 12. Now, not only his action and his address and his acknowledgement, but notice his acceptance Notice his acceptance. If you read through the psalm, I'll begin reading at verse 1 again. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, plural there, notice, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Thou hast put, verse 8, thou hast put away mine acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. My friend, this person has come to grips with the fact that he said, this situation is on me and is here by God's allowance at least. He says, verse, thy, thy wrath lieth hard upon me. He has taken uh, account of the fact that God's anger seems to be upon him. Has sin occurred? He seems to certainly leave that open. But as he does that, as he acknowledges that may be a possibility. Notice the acceptance. Again, verses 7 and 8. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me. After owning his guilt and his physical problems, there is, there's not a hint of him saying to God, God, you've been unfair to me. Just in today's mail, I received a letter where somebody, a godly, a person who knows Christ as Savior, has written and said that because of the life circumstance, perhaps God is treating them in an unfair manner. You know what? That can seem that way when we allow our own emotions and our own thinking to be not be guided by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. My friend, if you are in a situation you think God is dealing you dirt, he's being unfair with you, may I say to you, God is a good God, a gracious and loving God. God is too wise to make mistakes and too loving to be unkind. And God has allowed some of the choicest servants of all time, 
of every generation to go through horrific times of physical calamity, life calamity, and God, not because of their sinfulness, so that God's glory may be seen. You remember John chapter uh, uh, 9? John chapter 8, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. John chapter 9, they confront him with a man that has been born blind. And the disciples ask Jesus, well, who sinned that this man is blind? Did the man sin? Did his parents sin? Jesus said, no, nobody sinned. He is blind for the glory of God. Jesus healed the man. May I say that sometimes God allows afflictions so that God's might in correcting the situation can be seen and God gives glory. Sometimes God allows the situation to stay on our life so that God's glory and grace may be seen as we do it and endure it with joyfulness and grace and the, and the joy of God and the praise of God on our lips. My friend, are you crying unfair to God or are you crying out to God and say, God, let me be a good witness and a testimony in the midst of my despairing situation. We can only uh, see him in the psalmist here, we can only see him crying out for help. We see him crying out for help. My friend, cry out to God for help in your despairing time. We've talked about the action, the address, the acknowledgement, and the acceptance that he is in this situation by God's own hand. I redirect you to verse 7 and 8. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways. Thou hast put mine acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination to them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. My friend, Your situation is not unknown to God. God has not made a mistake. He has not stopped being sovereign. Have you in your prayer cried out to God and say, God, I know I'm in this because you have allowed this. This This is an action that you have allowed to come into my life, and I will use it for your honor and for your glory. Have you done that yet? Then may I say you've sinned against God. Thank him for this. You say, Brother Mark, you've got to be kidding me. No. God says that we are to be thankful in all things and for all things. Now, I didn't write that. That's what I find over there in the New Testament. We saw that not too far ago in our broadcast in 1 Thessalonians. My friend, we are to be thankful for all things and in all things. All right, have you done that yet? If you haven't, perhaps you ought to stop, turn off the radio, and get on your knees and cry out to God right now. Well, there's one more word that begins with the letter A I want to see in this psalm. His ambition. His ambition. I'm going to read verses 10, 11, and 12. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Selah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? You notice his ambition. He is planning in this psalm to, to give God glory and praise. He is looking for opportunity to turn this situation and talk about the loving kindness of God, talk about the faithfulness of God, talk about the wonders of God. In your situation, are you talking about are, are you talking about a list of all your problems? Are you talking about the graciousness of God, the loving kindness of God? Are you talking about the wonders of God? What has been the motive of your crying out to God? My friend, his practice was prayer. The person he wanted to know was Jehovah, and the re- he wanted to replace despairing terms with terms of rejoicing in God's character and person. Take his advice. Practice prayer. Learn about a person and replace despair with notes of joy. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.